this is probably a shock to some, but for some of you that know me real well, this may not be. When I start looking at bikes, when I start talking about other model of bikes, bad things can happen. Very bad things. And I couldn't think of a more ill-timed purchase and I wasn't even necessarily looking for this than to buy a Harley-Davidson Ultra. So the financial situation isn't great right now. Let me negotiate this turn. So the king is gone. I'm gonna miss that bike. I towards the end here I really liked it uh, got the engine tuned to the way I wanted it um, I couldn't think of a better ride but I saw this and guess what it's not one of the ones with the Milwaukee 8 and you're like oh what what the hell you sounded like you really like that engine I do and I didn't the twin cam was never my favorite but but if you're a bargain hunter, that enters into the mix. And I wasn't really paying attention. I knew the last version of the twin cam was changed up a little to allow for a partial liquid cooling. And can I, oh, I was gonna pull over there and show you the bike and it looks like we've got trees, trash, and everything. well, okay, I guess I won't. So, um, allow for some partial liquid cooling and some other tweaks. I wasn't really paying attention around at the time of the project rush more to that because I thought everything else to the bike was really cool. Like uh, the balance, the handling, and just usability stuff like this wind flow control up here and uh, placing um, power sockets around on the bike so I don't have a cable, but if I wanna have a cable out and charge my phone, I can, so I can use it and charge. So it, it, that, that matters on long trips. So what they had done different with the twin cam is they upgraded the cams in it. That gave it more horsepower, more torque, and instead of getting, so what they did instead of getting into the stat game where now I'm 106, now I'm 107, now I'm 108, now I'm 119, now I'm 120, they kept it a 103. They kept the thing 103 and refined it. And actually adding the liquid cooling to this, it's, the cams are huge, but the cooling on it, my Road King on average on a cold day like this, this I'm probably, what, well, according to the air temp, I'm 46. That bike would probably be running maybe 210, 220, the oil temperature. This thing is recovers around 180. That's quite different. And uh, that's, of course, going to change up in the summer. But it just allows for the bike to respond in a more consistent fashion. So you don't have, so this is something they, this is a problem they had with the older twin cams and now they're kind of having problem with other modern V-twin, modern, scratch that, uh, newer V-twin bikes that are not Harley Davidson, is they dyno them. The numbers can change depending on the time of the day they run it, whether the, day, the, the day's cold, it's hot. So this allows for the bike to operate very, um, uh, uh, predictably the engine and reviewers noted that this is the first time um, I didn't keep the link maybe I'll find it um, it's not that big of a deal uh, but normally for in magazine reviews competitors have to um, distinguish their bike in some way and usually it's beating Harley-Davidson on the stats that gives the reviewers somebody something to talk about so on a comparable at the time, victory, uh, a number of the reviewers liked this version of the twin cam better. 
Not that it cranked out more horsepower, not that it cranked out more torque, it had nothing to do with that. It's just the engine operated predictably, was very refined, smooth. They just, they just loved the feel and how it responded. It just felt really, really mature. And I actually, having owned this now for a few weeks, uh, maybe a month, um, I really agree with that. Um, I'm going to do a full-on review of the bike, so I'm not going to spill too much. I still kind of want to learn learn on some stuff and just spend time, just spend some quality time with the bike, getting to know its quirks and and, and where things... Um, I, actually, I'm finding the bike, there's just... I don't want... When I go to do a good, bad, ugly, I, I don't want to sound like... It's going to be a total fanboy thing with this bike, but there's just not a lot of bad and ugly with it. Um, I'm finding some things that, that, that they're probably down to user preference. Some things I'd like to see change. Um, uh, some things that don't... Uh, up here where I'm at, it's always cold, it's always wet, generally. So the elements beat up on things mechanically a lot differently than let's say they would in a drier, hotter climate. So one of the things that gave me such a deal on this bike, and I know I'm gonna, I, it might surprise me with some challenges, is, and it's common out here, rust. And that's what happens when you don't store, store your bike how and where you should. And if it looks like I'm a little quirky still with some of the turns. This is why I liked Road Kings. You weren't managing this top weight. And while they improved the handling with the Rushmores 2014 on, um, I, I gotta say I do still prefer the ride and the feel of the Road King. But for long distance, this the amenities that this thing provides, the Ultra provides, is just gonna make trips so much, so much nicer. And so you're probably thinking next, why the Ultra over the Road Glide? Well, I like the Road Glide better. But you're gonna find if you're a bargain hunter, if you need to be a bargain hunter, you're gonna find the deals probably in the Ultra area. So that's why there. The handling. Having this top weight and especially this front dash, this messes with me. For the first time, yes, yours truly, I got in trouble in a corner and I panicked. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I hit the brake to slow up. And of course, then I look at the mirror, kind of like who's behind me ready to blast their horn. Fortunately, nobody was. But, but all I needed to do was counter steer and look through the corner. And for some reason, this dash setup, I'm so unused to it on, I'm, I've ridden mostly negative, naked bikes, it kind of messes with me. I don't know why. So I've got to kind of go back to school and relearn on this and just think, be thinking in my current slow look, press, roll, having this top weight, the dash. Um, yeah, I just don't want to fly into corners quickly and fast without thinking. Uh, before, with the Road King, everything was just gotten to where it was just on feel. If I flew in a corner too fast, uh, um, I just, I, I, it's hard to describe. This is why I wanted to record videos early on, describing things with my uh, early senses, feelings, what I knew, because after a while, everything, it's hard to explain. It just becomes instinct and feel. And that, with this new bike, got partially taken away. Is there anything they could have done differently with the bike to help that? No, the Rushmore they did. The Rushmore's, those improvements, they're designed to, they're to be more convenient for the rider, more enjoyable, and to have the bike fight you less. And what do I mean by fight? Well, there's some bikes that lend themselves, you just sneeze on the handlebars, and it's, you counter steer, it's just so easy and so simple. Um, this guy, at higher speeds, 
he doesn't counter steer on a dime. It feels like I gotta lean with my counter steer a little bit. Counter steering's always first, not getting into the counter steering, body steering thing, but any, even a person on a race bike on the track, they lean with that bike. And there's a reason for that, it's because at faster speeds, the bike resists counter steering. Well, with the way this bike is constructed, and I'm sure it's probably with all large touring models, even at not a fast speed, it feels like they resist counter steering, at least from what I'm used to with other bikes. The, the Road King was so, actually my speed triple, that's one where you just looked at the handlebars and it counter steered. It just, there wasn't, you could just slowly lean your body and you can kind of do that with this. Uh, but, uh, you know, counter steering's first, but it just helps if you lean with it. And the neat thing with this engine, this twin cam engine not running so hot, I've got my left, my right leg, could be my left leg too, but I can't come in contact with it. My right leg comes in contact with the engine. Not on the lower part, because uh, I think if you were wearing shoes and touch that for prolong a summer, it melts your shoe, but, but like the air box, um, even in this cold temperature, uh, it was very hot for my Road King. And see, this is one area where the corner just messes with me. Of course, it's damp too. That spooks me too a little bit. So uh, my leg is, is touching, touching the air box. And normally that would burn my leg. And I'm wearing jeans right now. It's fine. It's totally fine. I expect that to change during the summer. But, um, and I've already tested out the, the, radiator fans that are hidden in the lowers, uh, they come on. So everything works with the bike. Everything just absolutely works. Turn around here. Slow speed maneuver, this thing's quite easy. I think I'm probably more comfortable with that than taking some of the corners really fast. Hopefully, my camera's at a right angle, provides a good showing view. So, yeah, this is bike is a number of years old, and uh, they bought it, and it sat. No kidding. It has rust on. There's rust in the pipes, and um, some of the buttons like the ignition switch was um, not cooperating properly. And I was wondering, oh, dumb thing wear out already? Defective? It's like, it probably, now it's fine since I've been using it, it's like it got better. Probably had rust in it. After getting back, doing quite a bit of riding out, this, there's a tad bit of warmth here, but it's coming up off the engine. This, the air thing, is... This actually feels cold right here. That's nuts. That's why I'm able to have my leg up against that. I just did not... I have not experienced that on older Harley-Davidson's.